The text I've chosen for this morning is Philippians 4, the verses 6 to 7. Philippians 4, 6 to 7. We'll begin reading at verse 4. Philippians 4, we begin reading at verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. And then follows the text. Do not be anxious about anything but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So far the text. Brothers and sisters in the Lord and boys and girls who belong to the Lord, any guests who might be listening in with, with us. I read somewhere that the COVID-19 virus has spawned another virus that is even more difficult to deal with than the original COVID virus itself. And that is called the anxiety virus. It's that pandemic which has basically brought our nation and the world to uh, its knees has sown a lot of anxiety among people. And now there's real concern about people's mental health because of this anxiety. An effective vaccine has not been found or developed yet for the COVID-19 virus at this time. So we have to isolate and it's been weeks already that we've had to isolate and we don't know how long this is going to be. It can make you really anxious. When is this going to be over? And, you know, as you know, that isolation affects businesses and jobs and income and the whole economy. And that breeds even more anxiety. And it's on the news all the time. This and that about the, the COVID-19. So many issues. And with all, all that congregation, we can also easily become infected with that anxiety virus. There are already many things to worry about in this life. Many things that can cause anxiety. But what we're experiencing now only can increase that anxiety many fold. Well, the wonderful thing is that the Apostle Paul wrote to the Philippians already way back around the year 60. That there is an, a vaccine for the anxiety virus. There is one. Let's pay attention to that in our text for this morning. The title of the message is The Remedy for the Anxiety Virus. And we'll consider three things. First of all, the virus. Secondly, the vaccine. And thirdly, the effect. First of all, the virus. These days, brothers and sisters, boys and girls, you're probably thinking ahead, wondering what the coming months are going to bring. We're just go moving into summer. What's going to happen? How long is this lockdown going to go on? How is it going to be eased? What will it do to the Canadian and to the world economy? Will there be huge recession? What will this mean for my job, for my income, my family? Will there be groceries in the store in a few months from now? And it's fine that the government gives financial help to so many people, but the money has to come from somewhere. Surely taxes and, and duties are going to go up considerably. And school and college and university students, you worry about your education. How is that going to progress? Online education is okay for now, but when can I really get on with my schooling? Will I be able to catch up? Or am I going to miss a whole year? 
And if you're a senior, you worry about just the fact that you're very vulnerable to this virus, the COVID-19 virus. And you're concerned about your children and grandchildren. How will this affect them? And we can also be anxious about what the effect of the pandemic is and will be on the church. Online services like now are, are fine at this time, but they're not the real thing. When can we get together and worship together and socialize again, together again as congregation and study the Bible together? And will all the church members have the same commitment to worship together when we're able to assemble again? Will everybody show up? Oh, we have those worries today. Above and beyond the many we already have in normal life, even if there wasn't a pandemic. Worries about health, work, home, income, prices of things. Anxious about children and grandchildren. Will they love the Lord? Will they find their way through all the choices and pitfalls there are in life? And young people, you have the, the regular worries about the future too. What kind of career will I choose? Will I find a husband or a wife who really loves me for life and wants to serve the Lord with me? So many things about, so many things to worry about already. And we do need to think ahead. We can't just say, well, I'm not going to think ahead. I'm just going to live day by day, moment by moment. No, as Christians, we do need to think ahead. We need to take into account, for instance, that the Lord Jesus can return in glory at any time. Or we could be taken from this life at any time. And it would be foolish if we stuck our heads in the sand about th those possibilities above all. We need to be ready. And there's even good anxiety. The Apostle Paul writes Philippians 2 verse 20 about Timothy being concerned for the welfare of the church in Philippi. And he, the same word is used there in, in 2 verse 20 as in our text for anxiety. Timothy was anxious for the church, the well-being of the Christians in Philippi. However, when Paul writes in our text, do not be anxious about anything, he will mean anxiety in the wrong sense. In the same way Jesus warned us not to be anxious about our life, about food and clothing in Luke 12. It can become a wrong mindset. It become a wrong and sinful attitude in at least three ways. Three ways that I can think of. In the first place, that can happen when you endlessly fret over and brood on what might happen in the future. When that occupies your thoughts on an ongoing basis, all the possibilities of what might happen, and you can't let that go. In the second place, it's wrong worry and anxiety if you keep thinking, if only I knew which way things are headed beforehand, if I knew things were going to unfold in such and such a way, then I would be at peace. If only I knew what's going to happen, I, I just can't deal with the uncertainty. That's wrong anxiety too. And in the third place, being anxious in a wrong way is Letting your worries push aside your hope and trust in God. If I let my concerns about the future become bigger in my heart and mind than God and his grace and his kingdom and his power and his glory, then I'm anxious in a wrong way. See, brothers and sisters, boys and girls, it's in these three ways that anxiety becomes a virus within our sinful nature, a virus that infects our being and makes us spiritually sick, death, spiritually deathly ill, you could say even. A virus which makes you spiritually unhappy and which distances you from God and from Jesus Christ, the Savior. Compared to the COVID-19 virus, it might seem like a kind of a harmless virus. It can't harm you physically or economically but don't underestimate the anxiety virus this virus is worse than the corona 19 virus 
This virus has eternal consequences. It can seriously harm your spiritual life. And that means it can ultimately bring on eternal death. So brothers and sisters, boys and girls, it's imperative that we listen to what the Apostle Paul writes in our text about a vaccine against this anxiety virus. And that's in the second part of the sermon this morning. The vaccine. In, in the text, brothers and sisters, boys and girls, there's a, there's a vaccine that helps with that anxiety virus. The apostle writes, but in everything by prayer and supplication, in everything, by prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known to God. In everything with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. In other words, let your desires, your worries be made known to God. Now, we can have wrong desires if you desire or request someone else's husband or wife. That's a sinful desire, of course. A wrong request. And then your request to God should be for forgiveness, for self-denial. But you could also have holy wishes and desires. You want to live more out of God's grace in Christ. You want to grow in your serving him in humble obedience. You want to grow in your trust in him. Those are good requests. In our text, though, the Apostle Paul has in mind the kind of things we desire for our everyday life. The Lord Jesus spoke about the same kind of desires in Luke 12 when he spoke of food and clothing. And you can add to that health, joy, relationships, work, income, the things we desire for our life here. That's what but Paul means with those requests. The Spirit says in our text that we can make those requests or desires Known to God. Bring them before God. Before his throne. We don't have to be ashamed about those things, those desires. The Lord Jesus was true man. He had those physical desires too. He had hunger and thirst, for instance. He knows what it is to be true man here on earth. You can certainly make your requests your desires for health, happiness, work, income, relationships, and so on be made known to God. All the things that can make you anxious in this life. You can make them known to God. And prayer is then the vaccine that destroys the anxiety virus. And notice that the, the apostle mentions three, three ways to make your request known to God. He shows us that. That vaccine that kills the anxiety virus has three parts, you could say. In the first place, by prayer. And what, what is meant with prayer is not that you just throw up some request to God and see what might happen. Prayer isn't asking God and then seeing what might come of your request. True prayer is asking God for something in the full trust that he hears and that he will respond to your requests in his goodness and wisdom the way he sees fit for you. He will do for you what is to his honor and for your benefit. What he does may be very different from what you had in mind then. But it will be the right thing for his name and for your good. He will treat me as his child in Christ, you may know. Treat me even better than my earthly fathers, or than earthly fathers treat their children. That's that's real prayer. In other words, prayer is then submitting yourself to God's care in the full trust that He knows, He hears, and He knows and understands for the sake of Christ. And He'll do what is best for you. And that's not an easy thing to pray that way. But that's what's needed in anxious times. Prayer like that will deal with the anxiety virus. And in the text, the apostle adds to prayer supplication. Supplication 
is something that someone in a difficult circumstance makes to someone else. A supplication. Like when you're in the doctor's office and the doctor looks at you and says to you, your illness is incurable. And then you look beseechingly at the doctor and you say, well, is there something you could still do for me? You feel helpless. Well, making supplication to God is beseeching him like that. In helplessness, utter helplessness. You, he is the only one who can help. Oh God, I'm just a poor, helpless sinners, but you're almighty and good. Hear me. Supplication is prayer in which you acknowledge your own helplessness before almighty God. And that you can't do anything without him. And you can make supplication then even when you have it good today. Because you know you can't guarantee like that it will be that way tomorrow. Only God has tomorrow in his hand. Supplication is looking helplessly to God for whatever you need. And then there's the third part of the vaccine mentioned. Thanksgiving. In other words, always give thanks too. Also, when your mind is filled with all kinds of worries and anxieties and concerns, don't make requests to God without also giving thanks. That's such a healing thing too in anxiety. If you also give thanks to God in your prayers and supplication, sure, we sometimes say, look what we still have. We have so much more than so many others. But rather than compare what you have about with what, what others have or have not, it's better to compare what you have above what the Lord Jesus had, particularly when he was on the cross. He hung there naked. He was terribly thirsty. He suffered awful pain and agony. He was forsaken by everyone, even by his father in hellish agony. How could we not give thanks knowing what he went through for us? How could we not give thanks even if we had nothing at all? There would still be reason for us to give thanks because our Savior was completely forsaken by God. We will never more be forsaken by him. And then we can therefore also thank God above all because of Jesus Christ. We can approach his throne in prayer at all because of Christ. That we're allowed to make our requests, our deepest desires and our greatest anxieties known to God and that he hears. How thankful should we be for that? And the greatest reason for thanksgiving is always that we're, we're God's children in Christ. That he has granted me the forgiveness of all my sins and peace with him and everlasting life through Jesus Christ. That's incredibly, that's an incredible treasure worth more than anything else here on earth. It's worth more than anything ever I'll ever be able to ask of him. More than health or food or clothing or work or whatever. It's like comparing a couple of cents to a million dollars. See, brothers and sisters, boys and girls, that's the vaccine against the anxiety virus. Make your request to known with God, to God with prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Either anxiety is going to draw you to that prayer or it's going to push you away from that. It's one or the other. It's going to go one way or the other. Anxiety and the need to know what's going to happen can become so consuming that you forget that your almighty God and Father who feeds the ravens and clothes the lilies is in control of everything here. And then you neglect to pray and make supplication and thanksgiving to him. Or it could happen that the pra your prayer drives the anxiety virus away. You pray, make supplication with thanksgiving to God, and then... You're able to let things go. Leave them with your almighty father who loves you in Christ. Then you don't need to know how things are going to turn out tomorrow or the day after or next month or next year. No, 
just serving God and staying close to him becomes your first priority in life. And then you rest in him. And then the anxiety virus dies away. Of course, it's never a static thing. No, those two, anx those two anxiety and trust, hey, they can alternate in your life, in your mind, in heart. When your prayer life becomes weak, then the anxiety virus can easily stick up its head in, in your mind again, flare up. But then your prayers become heartfelt and sincere again too. That anxiety, and then that anxiety virus dies off again too. It's a daily battle actually. It requires daily prayer without slacking off. Because you realize that that virus is always latent in your system. In your sinful nature. And it daily needs to be held at bay by the vaccine of prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. But in that, God has given you an effective vaccine that will be there for you your whole life long. So when anxiety starts to affect your thinking and your attitude, and you become edgy and so concerned and worried and snappy, humbly bow your head, fold your hands, make your request known to God, your Father in heaven, in Christ who will hear you for the sake of his son, especially in this time of COVID-19 pandemic and what effect that has had on the health of so many in the economy and what hardships might still be on the horizon for us in the coming months. Pray with supplication and with thanksgiving. Make your request to known to God by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Don't think, I'm way too preoccupied with all kinds of things at this time to pray. I don't really have time to, to pray. Or you just sit there and brood over things. No, it's foolish not to pray. That's like thinking you'll take the medicine after the flu is over when you feel better. I'll pray in the future again. But I can't now. That's exactly the wrong way around. How will the sickness subside if you don't take the medicine now? How will the virus go away if you don't take the vaccine at this time? So let your worries and requests be made known to God with prayer and supplication with thanksgiving now. And if you've done that, what then? Will God grant you your desires? Your request will God make sure you keep your job and pass your school year and make everything hunky-dory for you as you look ahead? That's not what the text says. And that brings us to the last part of the sermon. The effect of that vaccine. The text makes a promise, a, a promise that if you make your request known to, to God with prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, then it says, verse, verse 7, And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That's the effect of the vaccine against the, the anxiety virus. First of all, let's think about that peace of God. There's two sides to that wonderful peace. The peace of God, peace with God through the, the blood of Jesus Christ. In other words, that everything is good between the almighty God and creator and myself. His wrath no longer hangs over my head. He has reconciled me to himself in Christ. His favor rests on me. He loves me in Christ. I'm not being punished anymore. This is not punishment. Whatever I suffer, it's not punishment. It's discipline, it's correction. Then you have the peace of God. And, and that peace surpasses understanding, it says. It's unfathomable that I, sinner, can have such peace with my almighty creator and God in these circumstances, in this life. It's too much not only for me to understand, it's even too much for me to make my own. But God works that faith and joy in me 
about that by the Holy Spirit through the gospel. And that is incomprehensible. It's all from him. And then there's that other side to that peace of God. That peace of God leads to becoming peaceful in your heart and mind. Because you know that he'll take care of you as his child and heir in Christ. He loves you as he loved his own son. He'll take care of my life as heir with Christ. And he'll prepare me throughout my life to enter the internal, eternal her inheritance he has promised to me. He, he'll work, make all things work together for my salvation. That's what he promised. He'll avert all evil or turn it to my benefit. I heard that was heard at that's heard at every baptism. He'll take my life and let it be to his honor and glory, however my life turns out. And see, brothers and sisters, boys and girls, knowing that, hey, confessing that, having that in your heart, that gives peace then too. I don't have to know how everything is going to turn out tomorrow or the day after. I don't have to get stuck with the same worries and anxieties going round and round in my head all the time. No, God will make sure that his purpose with everything and his plan for me too will be fulfilled. Through prayer, I can leave that with him every time again. Yeah, I will take it back every time, but I can push it up through prayer. Father, take this from me. Peace. Peace that passes, surpasses all understanding. All understanding. My understanding sometimes says, if it isn't going to be like this, it's going to go wrong. <laughs> but that peace of God is way above my and everybody else's understanding. God will make sure it turns out right. And that gives rest, that gives peace in every circumstance. I can rejoice in the Lord always then, no matter what he allows to take place in the world and in my own life. What a wonderful thing it is if you can believe that, if you have that peace of God. Peace in the middle of a world pandemic. In the middle of a struggling marriage. In the middle of a dealing with a failing business. Peace of God in your heart and your mind. Think of the Apostle Peter. Who preached and was arrested. And who lay down and slept soundly in prison on the day before Herod intended to execute him. Or think of Paul and Barnabas who sang hymns to God. While in prison in Philippi. Chained. Wonderful resting in the Lord. Beautiful peace of God. And that peace, Paul writes in the text, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Notice that the text describes that, that peace that surpasses understanding as a guard. It will guard. A vaccine is a guard against certain sicknesses caused by viruses. As you all know, we've all had vaccinations, I believe. It guards against getting certain sicknesses. Well, when you have that peace of God, it's like a vaccine that guards your heart and mind against the anxiety virus. It stands sentry over your mind and heart so that you're not overwhelmed by sudden onrushes of the virus of anxiety or fear. When fears about what's happening and anxiety about what might still happen start to infect your heart and go around in your mind then pray pray with supplication and thanksgiving let your requests be made known to God and then that peace of God that surpassing surpasses understanding will be like a vaccine in in your heart and mind it says stop no farther, you anxiety virus. You're not going to cause this person to be infected. You're not going to affect their life. No matter what happens. 
And that's wonderful to think about, isn't it, brothers and sisters, boys and girls? That vaccine guarding you so that you don't become overly anxious from losing sight what you have in Jesus Christ, in Christ Jesus, God's love and gracious and almighty care that you have in him. So do you notice the anxiety, the anxiety virus trying to work its way into your heart and mind at this time? Because of the pandemic, and what the effects might be? Does fear about the future, about the lack of control you have over what's happening with you and your loved ones, does it want to affect your mind, infect your mind so that you forget that you belong to God's Son in Jesus Christ? And that you're heirs with him of all things. Fold your hands. Bow your head. And by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Lay it all before your almighty father. In Christ. And then the peace of God vaccine. Will destroy those viruses. So that your heart and mind. Can rest in him. In his marvelous power. And work and grace. Amen.